Welcome and ladies and gentlemen, this is the complete square video. Let's get started. Alright guys, we're going to be solving this quadratic, which means we want to solve for x, but we're going to do that by completing the square. Essentially what I want to do is I want to get a perfect square trinomial. Okay? If you look right now and I try and factor this, I would not get a perfect square, meaning uh, this number is not a square. Eight, two numbers don't go into it perfectly and wouldn't give me this. So I want to make a perfect square. Now this one could be done easier, but we're going to use complete the square to do this. So the first step to complete the square is we want the C part, so this part, we want that to be vacant. So to get rid of it, we're going to go ahead and subtract 8 on both sides. So we're going to get x squared plus 6x, going to give us space, equals a negative 8. Okay. So I want to fill in a number here that's going to make this a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and we have a key to do that, and it's b divided by 2 and then squared. Okay, if you think about it, b right here, this value, um, you should have to add it twice, and if I square it, I'd get this number. Okay, so all we have to do is plug it into there. So we get 6 divided by 2, looks like a g, there we go, divided by 2 squared. That's going to become 3 squared which then we're going to go ahead and get um, 9. And so we're going to add 9 here. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay, so we have 9 over there. Now, this, if I were to x factor it, right, what two numbers multiply to give me 9 but add to give me 6, you're going to say it's 3 and 3. Oops, sorry about that. You're going to say it's 3 and 3. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and just go ahead and put in my perfect square. I know it's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 3, so instead of doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and straight to x plus 3 squared. Again, it's basically this part of the equation goes in right here. Okay, 6 divided by 2, which is, which is 3. And this is going to equal negative 8 plus 9, 1. We're in a very interesting part here because what I can actually do now is I can take the square root of both sides. Um, by taking the square root of both sides, I'll be able to get x alone. So square root and square root. We'll go ahead and start up here. And we're going to be left with x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. Okay, the square root of 1 is 1, but we also have to do plus or minus. Okay, my final step is just getting x by itself, so I subtract 3 from both sides. This is going to be leave me with x equals a negative 3 plus 1, and x equals negative 3 minus 1. So this is going to turn out to be negative 3 plus 1, which is going to give me a negative 2. And this is going to give me a negative 4. Okay? <clears throat> So if I actually were to x factor this one from the very beginning, and I didn't do, you know, our uh, complete the square method, uh, what I would find out is four times two is eight, and four plus two is six. So I could have x factored, got x plus two and x plus four, and then my answers for x would have been the opposite. So there's a lot more work to do that, but you'll find out that we can use complete the square on every problem to solve, not just uh, ones that are factored. Okay, so that's what makes complete the square a very nice uh, function for us. Let's look at another one. All right, here we go. Here's another one. This time we're going to have to move the 51 over again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 51. We get a squared plus 14a. Leave that space. Equals 51. Okay, so again, we're going to go ahead and take the b divided by 2 and then square it. That's going to be 14 divided by 2 squared. And most of us can hopefully figure out that 7 squared, which is going to give me 49. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides. Whatever I did one side, I have to do the other. And now, uh, again, this is where most students kind of get this mixed up, but this is now a perfect square trinomial right here. So this is a perfect square trinomial, meaning what times what gives me 49 adds 14 it's going to be 7 7 times 7 7 plus 7 so we just turn this into a plus 7 right off the bat and square it and then set this equal to 
51 plus 49, which is conveniently 100. Okay. From here, we're going to go ahead and square root it. And we'll go ahead and start back up at the top. We get a plus 7 equals plus or minus, always have to do that plus or minus, 10. Okay? Um, now, from this point, this is where we kind of break it down by subtracting 7 from both sides. And we get a is going to equal uh, negative 7 plus 10. And a is going to equal negative 7 minus 10. Okay? And so what we get for our final answer is going to be uh, positive 3 for a and negative 7, negative 10 make a negative 17. Okay? So one of the biggest steps right here is going from the a squared plus 14a plus 49 and knowing that instantly is going to be a plus 7 squared. Okay? It's a perfect square trinomial, right? And we made it that way because we chose the correct numbers right here in this step. Okay? All right, let's look at one where we're not going to get whole numbers. Because if we got whole numbers, that means I probably could just x factor this and it would have saved me a lot of time. Let's look at one where we couldn't do that. All right, notice this one's still not set up. We have to add 91. So we're going to add 91 to both sides. And we get r squared minus 4r, and then we're going to leave a blank, equals, and this is going to become 98. Okay? So we got to do our negative b, or sorry, b uh, divided by 2, and square it. Okay, so that's going to be 4 divided by 2, and squared. Uh, that's going to become 2 squared, which is just going to give me 4. So I'm going to add 4. Okay? And then over here, we're going to go ahead and uh, add 4 as well. And this is a negative 4 in here, by the way. So add 4 over here as well. Okay? This one we got to be a little careful. Uh, we want to think that it's going to be r plus 2, but notice I have to add to a negative 4. So that's going to be actually r minus 2 squared. So you got to be careful with that. And we should see that because this is a negative 4 divided by 2, which is a negative 2. That's what we kind of put in here. Okay? And then over here, this is going to equal uh, 102. As you can see, when I square root, this is not a perfect square, um, which basically means I am not going to get a whole number. Okay, So I basically get r minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 102. Okay, And we can break that down right now. We're going to just leave it for a second. Okay, And then we're going to go ahead and add the 2. And we get r equals plus or minus, I'm oh sorry, 2 plus or minus square root 102. Okay? And now if we can, we should try and break this down. Um, let's see if we can. 2 and 51. And uh, can I go with 51 anymore? Uh, unfortunately, uh, oh, it looks like maybe we could break this down more. Yeah, uh, 51, uh, we get, what, 3 goes into that. How many times? You can tell I'm doing this video in the morning, so my brain's not functioning quite as fast as it normally does. So, just letting you know that <clears throat> apparently I'm not as fast as I think I am. Uh, this would be 3 and um, 17. There we go. Um, let's see, we still don't have anything that's going to work. And then 17, nothing goes into that. So, unfortunately, that was a monumental waste of time. It doesn't even break down. Uh, so we are actually just left with our answer of r equals 2 plus or minus 102, or the square root of 102. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Just a short, quick video. Nothing fun or too exciting, except for the smiley face. So peace out.